So yeah, hi everyone. Welcome to today's Twitter Spaces with uh, ZeroX Django, the lead dev from the Gaspot team, uh, who recently launched on uh, on Meter. Very excited to have you here with us, uh, ZeroX Django. Thanks a lot for joining. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. So let's get started. Um, can you tell us what is Gaspot? Yeah, GasBot is essentially a cross-chain bridge that allows users to get gas as easily as possible. So recently we launched our integration with the meter network. And what that means is meter users are able to get their meter for gas super simply, as quick as possible, and for the cheapest fees that you can find for any other bridge. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, really useful. So can you tell us a bit about you know how bridges work in general and, and what differentiates GasBot from other bridges? Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of things that differentiate us, um, but just from a high level, bridges um, allow you to move funds from blockchain to blockchain. So let's say you have funds on chain A, but you want some funds on chain B. Basically, a bridge will allow you to lock up your funds on chain A, and the bridge sends you the funds on the destination chain B. GasBot works in the same way. We also have a lot of features on top of it that really set us apart. So our biggest thing is really our, our UX. So if you've been in crypto for a while, you might have the same feelings that crypto UX is you know, pretty lacking in a lot of areas and bridges are no exception. So when you go to a bridge website and you have to connect your, it can be clunky to move your funds from chain A to chain B. GasBot makes it super seamless. Our UI is, is impeccable. Um, firstly, we scan your wallet to see what tokens you have that are supported by the GasBot system. And we show all the users their tokens. And basically, we minimize the number of clicks and transactions that use when order their funds on Meter, for example. Um, our big differentiating feature is our gasless relays. So as a user myself, I always found it really difficult to get that first bit of gas because as you know, crypto users listening would know, you have to have gas to transact on any chain. And getting that first bit of gas was always kind of, you know, I had let's say USDC in my wallet, you can't do anything with that USDC until you have gas to, let's say, swap it or move it around. So what GasBot allows you to do is it allows you to sign an off-chain permit message. Um, and when you sign that off-chain message, it grants GasBot allowance to some of your funds. And we can just pull those and relay that token and then send you gas, the equivalent value of gas. So basically, it helps you never be stuck in case you're just without gas, and that's our that's really Gasbot's main offering. For sure, yeah, I think uh, it's the the best way to get started in in any ecosystem. I mean, you need gas to to, do, to make any transaction. So making that seamless is probably the most useful tool <laughs> you can have. So um, yeah, yeah, for sure. On the notion of uh, you um, mentioned like bridge fees, uh, you know, you guys are, are the lowest. How do you manage to do that? So um, we managed to do that by just offering our own bridging service. Um, looking at some of the competitors, I actually did a, a really detailed breakdown of bridge fees and total bridging time for most of the top players, which is actually the pinned tweet in my Twitter profile. Uh, basically, I've realized that they just actually just charge a good amount. I'm not exactly sure why they do. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with paying like decentralized uh, relayers, but GasBot, since GasBot is run just as you know, GasBot's internal system, we can just keep those fees as low as we want. Uh, currently, our fees average 30 cents per transaction. So every time you move funds from chain A to chain B, you're really only paying like a 30 cent fee um, compared to some of the other people that are charging three, four, five dollars, even some of the top players charge up to 20 for a, a simple small transaction. So basically the name of the game for GasBot is to make things quick and easy, but we're not trying to do it. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So uh, where can someone use GasBot at the moment? So GasBot has a few different homes. Um, you can either use it straight from our own DAP at GasBot.xyz uh, basically, everything can be accessed via our website. But the really cool thing about GasBot is we have boiled our entire swap interface down into a package that dApps can integrate directly into their own environments. So another like little story for me. Um, I think you know crypto is, is amazing, but UX really is apparent, and um, it, it's difficult 
to get funds where you need it. And I really, as a crypto user, I didn't like the fact that I would go to a new DApp on a new chain. And um, I realized, hey, I don't have gas and I have to like leave or I'm linked to a bridge externally and I have to connect my wallet again. You have to trust, you know, basically you put trust into that new bridge website um, to connect your wallet and you know sign away all your tokens. So my idea for GasBot was to, instead of making people leave to bridge, bring that bridge directly to the dApps. So if you find a dApp, um, you can just stay on the dApp and get your gas directly from there. So GasBot in its like purest form um, is a dApp integration that the dApp is going to bring in to their own website and allow you to get gas directly from there. Uh, so currently you can use GasBot on our dApp, like I said, or that we have a few integrations that have already launched um, and hoping to get more up and coming here soon. Hopefully, you know, maybe on the meter blockchain as well. So if you find a new awesome dApp on meter that is integrated GasBot, you'll be able to get it directly from that site as well. Yeah, that's super useful. And I think for meter especially, we have a dual token system, which may add a bit of complexity. Uh, and we have Shohan, CEO of Mita, with us as well. Perhaps this is a good time to kind of, uh, Shohan, if you can give us a little intro on why we decided on the dual token system, what separates MTR from, from other gas tokens. Um, oh, yeah, yeah sure. So, yeah, first, uh, it's a great pleasure to have uh, Zorax uh, Dangle to come to the uh, AMA. And... Uh, we truly welcome uh, Gasbot uh, into the meter ecosystem. We have already started uh, integrating uh, the Gasbot. Uh, right now, it's just a link, but we're figuring out uh, how to like uh, integrating the uh, the UI widget into all the uh, applications we built. Um, yeah, for example, our official bridge already added uh, the uh, the Gasbot link. And uh, yeah, it looks uh, really clean and neat uh, and easy to use. Um, in terms of uh, meter, uh, basically we are a hot stock two consensus powered uh, EVM chain. Uh, we have uh, several unique uh, features other than high performance and highly decentralized. Uh, we have uh, front running resistance and also the gas token in our network is uh, Meta stable token created by proof of work, but have a long term economic equilibrium. So basically, we use a token called MTR as gas uh, to pay for all the transaction fees. But the network token for validations, uh, proof of stake, is uh, MTRG. Um, because of that two token system, uh, people are often run often running into issues of uh, uh, how to figure out uh, where to get gas. So in the past, we have uh, done quite a few things. For example, gasless swap, and also uh, try to integrate uh, uh, the bridges uh, to uh, support more networks. But uh, I mean, uh, GasPod is definitely really a killer because basically it uh, supports so many different networks. Basically, every network uh, you could imagine. Um, yeah, it's uh, it has been great. Um, Actually, I have a question for like Zero X Tango. I mean, like, how did you guys uh, like decided to make this project? I mean, like, uh, I noticed uh, you are like a background of like doing a lot of uh, like security audits uh, and probably like a uh, like a code hacker yourself. I mean, just curious, like, what made you to decided to work on this project? Yeah, for sure. Uh, firstly, thanks for the kind words. Really appreciate hearing that about GasBot. Um, yeah, so my background is in Web3 security uh, as an auditor. And as an auditor, us auditors do a lot of audit competitions. And basically, you anonymously submit bugs to projects and you get paid in USDC, usually on Polygon. And that's actually why I started building GasBot because I would receive USDC on this fresh wallet and I couldn't move it around without having to get Matic for gas somehow. And a lot of them, they, uh, they favor anonymity. So they, um, they basically don't want to transfer Matic from another of their known wallets. Um, so GasBot allows you to take, let's say $1 of USDC and sign a permit message off chain. And basically we grab $1 of USDC and send you about $1 of So fund your wallet and 
enough to be able to bridge out your USCC or swap it for Matic or do whatever you want, maybe stake it into a protocol or something. Um, so it was really born out of necessity for me as a security researcher. And, um, and then I just realized that yeah, maybe other people are running into this problem as well. And then we pack, packaged it up with a nice UI to click. So currently, uh, you mentioned like you are running your own bridge. So you have an infrastructure that like basically like indexing like so many different chains and uh, like handle like all the transactions. Yep, yep. Um, everything internally. So everything's done in a single gas bot mm -hmm. contract. That single gas bot contract holds uh, one stable coin per contract, usually USDC. Basically, whichever token is most used on that chain. And uh, just every swap request that comes in, we swap from USDC to gas and send it out wherever it needs to go. On the origin chain, we'll swap whatever token comes in to that stable coin that the contract holds. It's a pretty simple system um, when you think about it from the Web3 components. What's uh, your long-term view for like Gasbot? I mean, like I understand obviously you want to support uh, as many chains as possible, but like, do you foresee any like additional features that uh, you want to add into Gasbot? I mean, for example, like cross-chain automation or like, I mean, yeah, all kinds of like interoperability-related things. Yeah, for sure. I could speak about this for a, for a while, probably, because uh, Gaspot is currently changing, and we also have a lot of long-term goals. So one kind of short mid-term goal is to uh, integrate Solana. So we're seeing a lot of interest in people wanting to bridge mm -hmm. fund, funds to Solana. Currently, we're only supporting EVM-compatible chains, so that'll be a big infrastructure change for us, but uh, one that shouldn't be too hard to do. Um, next, we're actually in the middle of a big upgrade of functionality and rebrand. So currently, GasBot, as its name suggests, only delivers gas. In the next couple of weeks, we're actually going to expand to deliver all ERC-20s and oh. gas. So it's going to function more as a primary, like a, a normal bridge, but still with the same awesome UX, UI, um, and gasless transactions, which I don't think is offered by any bridges out there, to mm -hmm. my knowledge. Uh, so really doubling down on the flexibility and uh, and UI of our GasBot widget, it will allow dApps to uh, let their users acquire the tokens in just a, a couple of clicks and gas in the same transaction. So you can think about it as like if there's a lending borrowing protocol on meter and they only allow users to supply, let's say a few different coins, GasBot will allow that dApp developer to specify that their GasBot integration can see you know, those coins that the users would need on their dApp. So it's kind of a, uh, the functionality is basically tailored to the dApp and mm -hmm. its users to make it as flexible as possible. Um, and beyond that, so our long, long-term goal are the downstream interactions that you're talking about. So one level further is maybe we allow users to acquire tokens and add liquidity to a pool and stake those LP tokens in some sort of vault. Um, that would be awesome. So basically, if you think about it from a high level, let's say you can start with, let's say USDC on Optimism, bridge over to Arbitrum, um, receive your tokens, turn them into LP, stake that LP. So that, that is all possible, although um, we're a little bit slow to roll mm -hmm. that out because once you start adding adapters and extra contracts, things can get a little bit complicated. Um, but that is on the roadmap for the long term. Got it, got it. So like right now, uh, for example, um, most of the transactions on GasBot, I would imagine like uh, really small transactions. Basically, people get the initial gas, that type of thing. Um, so people may not care about security that much. So are you like uh, looking for future applications more towards these type of uh, like smaller transactions where you think uh, GasBot uh, in the future will scale to like bigger amount of transactions and more like competing directly with uh, like bridge providers, uh, things like that. That's a really good question. Uh, yes, so we are scaling. We started really small. Um, originally, our max transaction value was $50 because mm -hmm. delivering, delivering only gas users usually don't need more than $50 worth of gas to keep them going for several months. Um, as our liquidity has grown, we've expanded to $200 transactions which is still relatively low, especially as we student all 
their C20s. Um, and our next upgrade, we're going to increase that cap to $1,000. And then as we grow, we're going to scale um, to allow larger and larger transactions. And hopefully at some point, we'll be able to compete at the level of you know these, these large scale bridges. Um, we're, we're a self so yeah. uh, gaining that liquidity is, is a challenge, but we, we hope yeah, to Because, I mean, like, typically, like, uh, I mean, there are two projects. One project is for, like, bridge infrastructure. The other is a liquidity project to help, uh, like, providing the liquidity for the bridges. So, yeah, it's uh, very interesting to see, like, you guys, uh, like, basically self-funded everything. Oh, no. Right, right. At, at some point, we do plan on opening up uh, like liquidity provision mm -hmm. to the masses, um, but in terms of making sure that our functionality and basically all of our internal components are working as expected, that's that's going to be a later offering. Because when you start uh, offering the ability for users to deposit their funds, it obviously comes with a lot of security factors yeah. um, and things to make sure that every everyone's funds are, are safe. Yeah. So I guess uh, it's more like. Do you see like Gasbot uh, becoming more like a bridge in a, like a bigger vision, like in the future, where it's more like a, a utility tool that uh, basically help uh, like smaller amount of transactions and uh, like interoperability automation, those type of things. Yeah, um, it's a good question because currently Gasbot is kind of filling a void in the Web two yeah. space. Um, it's a really awesome like utility for like DApp developers and, and users to receive a really nice UX and just experience for them to get their funds. But from the Web3 side, yeah, it is pretty good. So as we expand and get more DApp integrations, we plan on expanding our Web3 infrastructure and eventually becoming more of like a large scale mm -hmm. bridge. We also, if we need to do that and, and scale our Web3 in order for us to provide, let's say like, um, services to like wallet providers uh, doing the behind the scenes um, and that is going to require much more liquidity than we currently have so yeah right now we are kind of like a small scale like boutique mm -hmm. offering and eventually we'll, we'll scale out to kind of a large bridge yeah it's uh, it's really interesting to see like uh, you guys are working towards this goal I mean I guess I mean if that happens there will be like some tokens as well right I guess <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we, we do plan on having a uh -huh. token. Um, with our upcoming rebrand, we, we plan on launching one. And the idea behind that is uh, kind of to the same lines. Given that GasBot is more like a utility mm -hmm. currently, um, it's a utility that makes revenue. That's, that's kind of our entire model is a, a revenue-based mm -hmm. model. So having a token will allow us some sort of um, like staking incentives for users who believe in the GasBot protocol or you know our, our rebrand will be a different mm -hmm. name. Uh, they can buy that token and stake it in order to uh, earn pieces of that, that revenue. So that's something we're excited about coming forward. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh, regarding to like, uh, I mean, like revenue generation, you mentioned like uh, you charge a small amount of like a bridge fee, right? I guess some user may be interested, like, do you guys also charge like anything on the spread or it's just like a fair game? Like you just trade directly on the, like whatever DEX is on different chains and uh, provide the, uh, uh, the the token swap. Yeah, so you know, we don't take anything from the user other than the fee that we uh, that we broadcast to them before they mm -hmm. make the swap. Um, so to break down our fees, because it can be a little complicated given that we do gasless transactions. So imagine you have some USDC on Optimism, for example, and you want some MTR mm -hmm. meter. Uh, so basically, when you go to the GasBot UI, they're going to put in, hey, give me $10 worth of MTR for my Optimism USDC, and it's going to break down the, the, the fees there. So that'll be a 30 cent GasBot fee. It'll also, we also charge for the amount of gas that it will cost to relay the call on mm -hmm. Optimism, which will be about a cent or less from the recent Dincoon upgrade. And then to transfer gas out on the meter chain, that's probably less than a cent, given that meter has low, uh, low fees for transactions. And so all in all, we'll take about 32 cents from the $10, and equivalently, we send $9.68 worth of MTR on the meter chain. So our, our calculations are, are pretty simple there. 
Do you actually you know, making any swaps, or like you are carrying any like risk of like converting the uh, the stable to like volatile gas tokens? Yeah, so we don't hold any risk there. That's why we hold that single stable coin on every oh, contract okay. or every uh-huh. chain. And then, yeah, so originally our original idea was just to hold the gas token on each chain, but we didn't want to be exposed to the price volatility. Mm-hmm. So we hold stable and swapped gas. And oh, gas. okay. Got it. That's really nice. Thanks. Yeah, it's um, it's, a, it's a, been a fun system to build. Yeah. So are you... And then how many developers are there to build the, the Gasbot application? It's a small team currently. We have three, um, three on our team. Um, I handle the smart contracts and, and backend application. And we have a, a front end developer who handles everything from our, our DAP and our DAP integrations. Uh, he's a wizard with uh, the UI he's built. Actually, um, I'm the founder of the project and I also do the backend development, as I said. Uh, the original idea for Gasbot was really just the functionality, but the awesome UI package was a product of a developer. Um, his name is Cadet, who's done a wildly good job on our, our front end. That's nice. Yeah, yeah no, I uh, noticed that. like you are like basically personally reaching out to different projects and doing business development as well. Yeah, this started as a small project and now it's starting to grow into a bigger project. Um, I was also doing uh, auto Damien security research on the side, but now this is becoming more of a, a full-time thing. And uh, yeah, that's, that's why I'm really excited to be engaged with the Meter team um, as we develop these awesome uh, relationships. Yeah, it's our pleasure to uh, work with your team, yeah. So uh, let's move on to something fun. You mentioned, I think I heard that there's a rewards program. People can actually earn a commission. Could you tell us a little bit about how people can earn rewards through a Gaspot? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's actually really simple. You go to gaspot.xyz, and I think there's a tab in our nav bar. It's called rewards. Basically, you connect your wallet or put in your wallet address. It doesn't matter. And it'll spit out a little link for you. And you can just send that GasBot link around, and you can earn 10% of the swap fees that GasBot takes. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a simple referral system, but we make it super simple just to, to get your link and, and pass it around. Um, you know, we, we believe that GasBot's, like, <laughs> such a nice, like, user-friendly experience that maybe other people would, would like to tell others about it and also just get paid a little bit to do so. That's very nice. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, so you mentioned some things that you're working on, like uh, Solana. Uh, what's, what, is, what are you working on right now in the sense of what's the next release? The next release is um, our, our update to deliver all ERC-20s. So currently our UI was set up just to... Mm, uh, deliver gas, which is pretty easy from a UI standpoint, but now we're going to have like a token select um, little thing that pops up. So we've redesigned the entire GasBot UI, tried to make it as clean as possible to um, basically deliver any token. And uh, we're also finishing up the smart contracts and engaging in an audit uh, to get that all taken care of. We have GasBot already audited and the new system will be very similar to GasBot from a smart contract perspective. But um, I still still want to get the, the new upgraded functionality audited. And following that, we should launch our new rebrand and updated functionality here probably in a week or two. And, um, and that'll be a big win for us. And at that point, it's, it's all about trying to get as many um, awesome integrations set up. And hopefully we'll be seeing GasBot and in, uh, in more dApps coming up. Yeah, definitely. Um, so for people to stay informed, where, where is the best community for people to join? Uh, definitely in our Discord. So our Discord, um, we can provide links to that. But, uh, but yeah, you can join the community there, get in touch with us. You can talk to any of our team members there. Uh, we, just, we just love engaging with the community. Other than that, staying informed through our Twitter. Um, our Twitter, our, our, our socials, our, our Twitter posts, and pretty much all of our updates just to kind of keep everyone in the loop. And uh, we also have a Telegram group that we could uh, chat there as well. Okay, awesome. So, uh, talking about Gasbot's partnership with Meta, can you tell us a little bit about you know how this came about and 
you know, what this partnership kind of entails for Gaspar. Yeah, so this partnership, um, I'm so stoked about it because uh, originally uh, myself and the Meteor team uh, spoke a little bit. I joined their developer ecosystem channel on Telegram and uh, I was just really happy with how the Meteor team was able to work with me and kind of help Gasbot like sprout. Um, so in order for us to support a new chain, uh, it takes a lot of time for us to develop and also uh, it, it helped that the Meteor team was able to provide some financial incentives and some support to us to be able to one, do that dev work, but also to supply liquidity to our gas spot contract on the meter chain. That helped a lot. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, it was really awesome to be able to kind of uh, integrate meter and just nail down that, that relationship. So really appreciated. And uh, hopefully we'll see some other dApps on the meter network integrating the gas spot native widget. And hopefully we can make the like meter chain like the easiest chain to get gas on. Um, it would be a really nice win for, for Gaspa as well. Yeah, we love that. And I love your tagline, um, never struggle for gas. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I think things have gotten better towards, you know, recent years. But back when I started in crypto in 2020, 2021, it was ridiculously hard for me to get gas, especially on like the smaller chains where my centralized exchange wouldn't withdraw to. Um, Bridging used to be a mess. It's a little bit better now, but um, still, still some gaps there. Yeah, that's fine. So, uh, when well, you guys launch the ERC twenty, it will be like even better because people can choose any tokens they hold. Even they don't have any gas token, they can actually swap USDC to a uh, target networks, right? Yeah, hundred percent. So you have any token or gas anywhere. You can get any token or gas anywhere. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much the, the entire. Actually, um, and flow will you guys it. be able to like support tokens? Uh, I mean, like uh, without the permit uh, functionality. We do. Um, yeah, we heavily favor the permit functionality just because it's such a seamless seamless UX. But we do also support tokens that just do the normal approval oh, flow. Okay. Um, so Gaspot actually has a differentiator there as well. So if you're familiar with how a normal bridge works, basically you approve that the bridge can use your token and then you also send a transaction to bridge the transaction. So two user transactions, we don't make the user do that. We just ask them to approve the token and then we handle the bridge transaction through a relay, just like through the permit flow. Um, just another way we reduce the number of transactions for users. Yeah, that's really good. I'm looking like uh, more generally, what what benefits does Gaspot bring to the table in their partnerships with other projects? Uh, so besides just offering users, their users functionality regarding getting gas and eventually tokens in like a seamless and streamlined way, we also offer uh, generous revenue sharing so um, our idea is that Gasbot itself can split revenue with the integrating dApps uh, since they're kind of like the storefront for Gasbot. So um, we're just all about kind of like maintaining awesome partnerships and, and splitting revenue with anyone who wants to integrate Gasbot. So um, we kind of are like twofold in that we offer help with functionality and also financial incentives. Um, and that seemed to be pretty fruitful for Gasbot's early life. Got it. Awesome stuff. Um, uh, we're at the half an hour mark now, so I will open up the floor for, for questions. Uh, and whilst we wait, uh, I had a question for you about your time as a kind of white hat hacker. Did you come across, you know, how has your experience been in the blockchain space? When you look at these these code bases, and uh, has anything shocked you? Or have you, you know, in terms of vulnerabilities, have you? What, what what's your take? Uh, so my take is an optimistic one. I started early twenty twenty two with auditing after just being a DJ for a couple of years, <clears throat> and uh, and back then, even just was that just two years ago, uh, code was a lot more novel and. Uh, not very standard. And what I've seen a shift in the last couple of years is people using a lot more standards, using um, libraries like 
Open Zeppelin and Soulmate and things that are audited, uh, audited code that is reused by everybody. And we're seeing a lot less just like raw code written by you know, random developers without much standard to it, which has really helped reduce the attack surface for smart contracts. Um, I personally, as an auditor and bug hunter, I found it a lot easier to find live vulnerabilities back a couple of years ago. Now it's it's a lot harder to find, in my opinion. So Web3 security is definitely going in the right direction. Awesome stuff. Okay, great. So we have a few questions. I will now uh, unmute Renovant. Hello. Hello. So, listen, you know, in terms of um, network congestion and um, all these kind of um, challenges that face this, um, um, I'll put it like this, that maybe there could be a shutdown. How would you have any kind of back about how you would you approach such a situation? Uh, how I, I would approach network congestion? Yes, it's just like this, Solana shuts down. This Solana shuts down. Uh, okay. Haven't had to do much thinking about Solana shutdowns, given that we're only EVM compatible. Speaking only about EVM and network congestion, Gasbot. Um, what we do on our backend system is we query the current average gas price, and we'll increase it just by a little bit to make sure that our transactions are executed promptly. Um, just to make sure that you're not waiting on our relay transactions. So, our we basically send transactions with, it, like, if you're familiar with MetaMask, with like an aggressive estimate for the gas price, just to make sure that things flow smoothly. But when it comes to integrating Solana, yeah, we'll probably have to do some more thinking about that. I, I personally don't have much experience using Solana. I just kind of hear the stories of, um, of how that network acts. So I have some homework to do there. So actually related to that question, uh, sometimes, for example, the network's uh, RPC may have issues. Uh, you may have problems sending out transactions. I mean, how do you guys handle that type of issues? I mean, where would the user will have to go for support if uh, the transaction didn't complete? Or have you guys ever run into that situation at all? Yeah, we did run into that situation earlier on in GasBot's life, um, but not for the last several months. Uh, GasBot itself is only about but like uh, seven or eight months old. For the last stable four months or so, we haven't run into any issues. We have a waterfall of RPC providers that we use. So we have our premium RPC calls, our RPC providers that we use. And if they run into any issues with either just their RPCs are down or their blocks are lagging, we waterfall onto um, another provider that will act as our fail safe. Um, in terms of making sure that transactions go through, we just have a really robust monitoring system to make sure that any funds that we take, we need to send out the equivalent funds. And you know, every now and then, like the first transaction to send funds out might fail. Um, we just make sure to follow it up with a very quick replay transaction um, directly following. Usually that'll be because we send a transaction to swap from stablecoin to gas, but maybe the uh, slippage parameter, um, you know, puts a minimum amount out that isn't valid anymore. So we just follow it up with an another swap that will satisfy those conditions and transfer out the gas. Got it. Great. Awesome question, Relevant. Um, I think we have a few more questions. Say, Kira, do you want to go? You know, in terms of security, so if it's your platform. Security. You said how secure is the platform? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so I view GasBot as a more secure system than traditional bridges. Given that mostly our, our main use case is permit support, basically what that allows you to do is sign an off-chain permit message that grants allowance to only the GasBot contract. We don't normally work with approvals Although we do, um, our normal flow is not through approvals. And that's where you see most of the security concerns with bridge-related vulnerabilities are when you have an approval to a bridge contract that someone then learns how to exploit. We minimize that just working through permit messages and working through direct like native bridges. So you can send your native token directly to a gas by contract and initiate a bridge that way. Um, other than that, our security is also kind of a function of our small transfers, given that we're, we're capped at $200. 
Um, there's not much room for, let's say, sandwich attacks, if you're familiar with that, where you have these really big swaps taking place where people are able to perform like arbitrage to steal value from those big swaps. Since we're kind of a small scale sending gas, it's um, you're not going to uh, really be victim to any slippage or anything like that. Um, other than that, we have taken a lot of considerations in relation to security. So as a, an auditor myself, I wrote the contracts with a security mindset. I also got the GasBot contract audited by four different parties. Um, and one of those parties also uh, helped us take a look at our Web2 components. So we're, we're pretty well set uh, from a security standpoint. Uh, that's actually the part of GasBot I feel most confident about given my security background. Great question. Thank you, Sekira. Uh, Julia, do you want to ask a question? Yeah, Jiro. Jiro. Hello, can I ask a question? As we wait, maybe um, Chuzus, do you want to go? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. we can hear you. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. So my question is, um, so um, what, what what is the process for users to obtain uh, gas on the gas uh, box without needing gas uh, themselves? Yeah. So the great thing about GasBot is, yeah, you don't need GasBot or gas itself. So if you have even a single token on your wallet on any of our sixteen supported chains, you should be able to use the GasBot system. Um, so let's say you have USDC on Optimism and you want gas on Meter. It's, a simple, it's as simple as going to gasbot.xyz and basically once you connect your wallet, it's going to show you, hey, you have some USDC on Optimism and just click around until you select the Meter blockchain and uh, then you'll just sign a quick message, off-chain message. So uh, yeah, it basically allows you to get that Meter gas without needing gas on any other blockchain. All right, yeah, that's more clear. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Jesus, do you want to go? Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. Can I ask my question, sir? Yes, sir, sir. Okay, my question. What is your roadmap plan 2024? Can you share with us? Thank you. Yeah, so the roadmap is really heavily based around our upcoming release in a couple weeks uh, to deliver all ERC-20s. So over the course of the next three weeks to four weeks, you're going to see us not only launch that feature, but also just start supporting more and more tokens, just adding them to our, our database. And you'll just see more tokens that you're able to use as your like, transfer token and also the token that you receive. So that's going to take us through Q2 2024, and then hopefully Q3 2024, we'll see that Solana support, maybe other non-EVM blockchains as well, as we see support for that. Um, adding blockchains at this point for us is really a function of you know the support from the blockchain itself. That's why we were able to support Meter. Um, we were actually not going to expand to any other networks for the current time time being, but given Meter support, it was really helpful. So so we launched that. So if we get some time for it, we'll start to look for um, non-EVM blockchains to, to bring in. Um, other than that, we hope to see an increase in our liquidity, either through more funding to ourselves or through another party and hope to increase our swap limits. And then really our, our big push is to um, get GasBot or our rebranded brands uh, integrated on dApps everywhere. So hopefully you'll be seeing a lot of integrations on all the dApps you already use. Um, and just kind of getting the idea floated to projects and dApps and just um, showing them how GasBot can help their users just kind of stay on their dApp without having to leave. Great answer. Thank you. Kevin, do you want to go next? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Can I ask my question? Yes. 
Okay, my question is ambassador play a very important role and every budget. Do you have an ambassador program? If yes, how can I be one? We don't have a dedicated ambassador program. Yes. But um, I would be interested in talking to you directly just to kind of see how we can uh, serve each other here. If you were here earlier in the call talking about our rewards program, so we have a really simple referral program where you can go check out gaspot.xyz slash rewards, I believe. Uh, it's in our nav bar. Just go check it out and uh, put your wallet address in there. That's going to give you a link that you can just immediately send to people and earn 10% of the swap fees that come through. Um, and to, to reach out to me, go ahead and send me a message on Twitter and we can talk there. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, who's next? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity. So my question is, uh, what are the best plan you have in your uh, ecosystem to let people know uh, you have a great project and how do you intend to push your project to top projects? Uh, we're not, <laughs> we're, we're trying to expand on the marketing side and getting our name out there. Right now, we don't really have much of a pipeline um, to kind of do that. Uh, everything is kind of just happening by word of mouth or just by reaching out to projects and, and chains directly. So that's something we could definitely work on. Don't really have much more of an answer on that one. Uh, so, okay. Uh, you know, uh, without uh, uh, adequate market capital, project dies. So how do you intend to let uh, uh, your community know you have adequate market capital to push your project to the top project? No, so we don't have a market cap yet, even though we don't have a token. Um, but all updates will, will happen in our Discord, and we, we get everyone updated there, just kind of know the progress. So if you're an early supporter of the project, uh, definitely go check out our Discord, and we'll, we'll keep you in the know. Okay, thank you. Keep building and keep supporting. Thank you. Thank you, Benjamin. We'll take two more questions. Uh, Julieta, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, I want to ask my question. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thank you for giving me this great opportunity. My question is, how does your project address scalability challenge associated with providing decentralized Oracle service? And what innovation and partnership are in place to enhance scalability and efficiency? I only got the first part of that regarding uh, our oracles. Um, so we actually don't need oracles in our entire system because uh, we're able to quote exchange rates through you know just off-chain RPC calls. Uh, no need to use oracles there, and we don't provide any like pricing data directly to our our function calls. So everything can just happen directly, you know, based on off-chain quotes, uh, just normal swaps through pools. I didn't catch the second part of your question though. Oh, thank you very much. You know, most um, projects are in, in, uh, in English. How do your projects intend to communicate uh, globally to other countries that doesn't speak English? That's a good question. I um, haven't put any thought into that yet, but that is something I would like to address probably in the next six months. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Julieta. And last question we'll take from uh, Bullish Pizza. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So my question is, uh, what upcoming development or partnership do you believe will have the most significant impact on gas bot ecosystem and utility in the near future? Uh, yeah, we have a couple partnerships in the pipeline. Um, they're all with, with gaps that have integrated gas spot. So um, I'm not particularly more excited about any of those integrations, but each one of those is really going to help us to get the name of gas spot out there to users. So everyone will see gas spot on those gaps. And uh, yeah, just hopefully we see a huge network of gas spot integrations throughout, you know, gaps on, on multiple chains. And we're really hoping to get some on the meter chain as well. Um, it's a really awesome kind of like, uh, pilot project for us with this um, relationship with the meter blockchain. Um, so yeah, that, that's probably the one I'm most excited about. Okay, can I ask one more question? Sure. Okay. 
uh, Southeast Asia is a very vibrant market and there are many new platform under development so do you have do you uh, <coughs> so what do you think about Southeast Asia and do you have to plan to grow there I'm sorry I didn't catch that okay uh, Southeast Asia is a very vibrant market and there are new platform under development so what do you think mm -hmm. about Southeast Asia do you have to plan to grow your project How do we plan to grow the project? Southeast Asia. The base? This year, we plan on growing the project <laughs> through, um, yeah, really just the roadmap that we've already described. Um, once we can deliver all tokens, uh, I hope that GasBot is an easy choice for DApps to integrate. Um, I, it's just kind of all upside, just you know, more functionality for their DApp, uh, more better UX for the users and also that revenue sharing that we share with DApps. So uh, that's that's pretty much our, our entire plan for the near future. Okay, thank you. Keep building, keep going. Okay, uh, thanks a lot for all the questions. We've had some uh, comments as well. So a game developer on Meta Network, um, BB Studios, I highly recommend everyone to check them out, has said that they'll implement Gaspot uh, into their game, so that's great. And they had a question, which is, is it possible to use third web fiat conversion integrations to buy on ETH with fiat and then use Gaspot to send to Meta? Or maybe you have your own fiat integration? We don't have a fiat integration, although it's been on my mind for several months. Um, haven't gotten down to implementing that or researching it more um, although that is on our roadmap just kind of like a really early stage incubation on our roadmap um, and i'm not familiar with how third web fiat on ramps work um, but if it's as simple as using your credit card or something to receive uh, eth or, or something then yes you could then use it on the gaspot uh, the gaspot platform um, maybe there's a better integration that we can build out on our side to help kind of smooth that into a single transaction or something. But uh, yeah, that's a really great question. Thank you. Yeah, great question. Uh, and then we have another one from Anvient. Um, what has been your biggest hurdle so far in the development of GasBot and how do you overcome it? The biggest hurdle, uh, speaking candidly, is the fact that GasBot <laughs> only delivers gas. It is, um, it's something that if you kind of like think about it for a while, it's a really useful mechanism that you, most crypto users will probably have issues with at some point. That's why we built GasBot. But selling GasBot to projects has been the biggest hurdle. Um, and that's kind of uh, jump-started our transition to deliver all ERC-20s. So when we talk to projects and say, oh, that's amazing that we can get users gas, but we also need tokens. So, so we're kind of leveling up our game there and delivering everything. So hopefully that uh, hurdle won't be a hurdle much longer. Yeah. Okay, great. I think um, this has been a, an excellent X Spaces. We have an overwhelming amount of questions, but I think this uh, uh, for, for everyone whose question was not able to be asked, please comment with your questions, and uh, we'll try and answer them. Um, but yeah, Zero X Django, thanks so much for, for joining. Uh, and, and do you have any questions for us? Uh, yeah, uh, generally. Um well, firstly, yeah, thanks so much for having me on. It was a lot of fun. And again, I really appreciate the support that Meter Chain has given GasBot. It's been a huge impetus for us. Uh, so thank you again. Uh, just generally for, for Meter, um, what's on your roadmap? What are you building here in 2024? Um, so we are building uh, quite a few things right now. Uh, one is uh, because uh, our consensus engine uh, is based on Hustop 2. Like, uh, it was like uh, probably the latest and uh, um, most uh, versatile and uh, resilient uh, BFT-based consensus. So we're looking at uh, uh, ways to allow other projects to utilize it. Uh, we have several directions. One is the uh, on the SDK front, uh, providing to other layer ones. And also we're working on a decentralized sequencer to allow uh, layer twos to be more decentralized. Also, uh, we have a BTC uh, bridge integration that we're working on. Actually, that would be an interesting thing for uh, GasPod as well. So, for example, how would the uh, 
make it easier for BTC users to onboard other EVM chains. That would be very interesting. Yeah, so we're working on a, like a BTC integration. Uh, initially, probably like a MPC based uh, integration, but uh, there will be like uh, more like uh, maybe based on other more like secure uh, methodologies, like maybe like zero knowledge proof, that type of things. Yeah, still working on that. Hopefully, we can bring it up uh, around the uh, end of Q2 or early Q3. Yeah. Amazing. That's amazing. It sounds like it's a great time to um, uh, to be with the meter chain. I'm so glad I got uh, turned on to meter. Keep up the great work. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you so much for, uh, for, for building uh, on meter and um, joining us on this X Spaces. And for everyone to get involved in the rewards program, just a reminder of the link is gasspot.xyz. And then you can see the rewards tab. Um, but yeah. Thanks a lot for joining for excellent with spaces. And we'll thank continue you. supporting Gaspar. Yeah, thank you again. Thanks for everyone for the awesome questions.